everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm really excited to be sharing with you my mid-year beauty favorites. I have in front of me a lot of products that I have loved since the beginning of the year. I've loved consistently. Some of them I've discovered, let's say that all of these products I've discovered by a maybe like mid-April, early May. So I've had them in my collection for some time and I've tested them and I have definitely really fallen head over heels in love with them. So we can start off talking, maybe we can leave the ones that I'm really excited about last. We can start off with fragrance, with scent. The first product, you can definitely tell that I've definitely been using it, is the Molecule 01 fragrance. This is a classic. People have been talking about this for years upon years. I used to and have it in my collection maybe like four years ago and then I ran out and I've always really liked it but my friend gave it to me on my birthday in December and ever since then I you can clearly tell that I've used about a half of it. It's beautiful, long-lasting, unique, different and you always get complimented on your smell when you're using this. I always have people asking me what fragrance I'm using and it's always such like a confidence boost. It's incredible. But not everything I've liked scent-wise has been this expensive. I've also really enjoyed these two Laleen body mists. This one is the Dead Sea Minerals Hydrating Body Oil. Wait, no, body mist. This one has a strong fig scent and I don't really consider myself to be a fig scent fan, but this one is unique. It's really different and it's fresh without being too green and I really like it. It's very, very mm, everyday friendly and also very good as a topper on top of something like the Molecule 01. The other one is quite the opposite of Mineral C, Mineral something, Dead C Mineral, whatever. This is the, okay, I don't really know how to say the, one of the words here is really confusing to me. This is the Botanical Body Mist, Olive and Babasu. I have no idea what that is. I should have looked it up, but I didn't. Um, but this is basically a warm, but not too warm, and not really sweet. It's not sweet at all. It's like a warm, fresh smell. It smells like a botanical spa, kind of. I really like it, and you can clearly tell that I've used up this much. In fact, if you compare the two, and I think I've gotten them like around the same time, I have definitely been loving this more than the uh, fig one, but I can't tell you that either one of them has been like a stronger favorite. It's just what I tend to gravitate for was this, but I do love them equally. Let's do skincare next because then we can talk about makeup and it's definitely more exciting for me. For skincare, I'm going to show you this actually and then we'll, we'll talk about this. This is the Empty Clinique Moisture Surge Hydrating Supercharged Concentrate and this is a backup. I can still get like maybe like a day or maybe two days of use out of this but it's on its way out. And even before it got to this point, I had my backup. Because this is such such an important part of my skincare routine. Not only because this is my preferred summer moisturizer, but also on days where I apply my skincare routine early on, if I decide to apply my makeup a few hours later, and I feel like I could always like use a skincare refresher, this is what I go for. It's so good, I really, really like it. At the beginning, I didn't really think it was such a vital part of my skincare routine, but as I continued using it and as I continued recognizing how much I enjoy using it, it just 
skyrocketed and it now is a huge favorite of mine. I really, really love having this in my collection. Another one that I... well... Okay. The next two products are products that I used to have in my collection. One I stopped using when I went cruelty free and now that I'm not I'm definitely back on the bandwagon. And the other one, it's just one that I was never at the store to buy it, but I've always loved. Let's do that. This is this Bon anti-pollution eye cream. I had it maybe like a few months before COVID and then I ran out and I couldn't get to any store. And there are no stores in my area. So, people keep interrupting me today, how rude of them. So, when I was at the store and I saw it, I immediately purchased it and I love, love this. This is by far my favorite texture of eye cream and it looks, it makes my eyes feel amazing. It does feel amazing. I cannot rave enough about this. I really love it. As well as I absolutely adore the Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair. Listen, like, this is a cult classic for a reason. And I just love how it improves my skin over time and it continues doing that. I feel like if I don't use this for a few days, I notice my skin's vibrance. And not really like vibrance, like visible vibrance, but like... It's, it looks dull and unhealthy. This is a really, really, really great component. And I love having this in my collection. Finally, you know what? Before we talk about actual makeup products, let's do brushes. Real Techniques have done it for me. Since I discovered this, I've been more and more curious about Real Techniques. And I purchased um, the setting brush separately. And then I was like, okay, I want to try more brushes, so I got a kit, and I have been really, 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 really loving them. The three products that have stood out to me have been obviously the Expert Face Brush, I love it for foundation as well as cream cheap products. I also love the Blush Brush for a gorgeously diffused blush application, and I cannot tell you how much I love the... Deluxe Crease Brush. I love it for a few things. I love this for diffusing um, cream eyeshadows. And I also love it for cream nose contouring and cream nose highlighting as well. It's so, so versatile and so, so incredible. I love having this in my collection. And I'm actually cont contemplating getting another one of these because I just love it that much. Okay. Complexion. There are a few more things that I can talk about, but things that I've discovered this month. So we're not going to be talking about those. We're going to be talking about these things. This is the MAC Face and Body. I've already filmed a video about it. You know my feelings. I really, really, really love this foundation. Uh, I have the shade C0, which is shocking because this is really fair. But because of the flexibility in coverage and because it barely covers, it looks the best on my skin considering the undertone and the vibrance. I just think that this is my favorite out of the entire range. I have waxed lyrical about it in my review so you can definitely check it out but I have to say that this has definitely been a strong strong favorite up to June 2022, but I think it's gonna continue being like a go-to product for me. My favorite concealer has definitely been the Shiseido Synchro Skin. I have two shades. I have the shade 202 and 102. 202 is a truer match to my face, so let's say I have like spots that I need to cover, I will go for the 202, but 102 is perfect for my under eyes because it definitely gives enough of it brightens without looking like this like Kim K trend that has died so so long ago. Thank God. I love that concealer and that concealer is actually super super good with the coverage and the longevity. It blends effortlessly. 
I will talk more about that in the Shiseido video that I'm working on, but uh, stay tuned for now. All you have to know is that it is a great concealer. Okay, let's do cheeks. We are going to do cheeks now. I have three products and I cannot believe I'm talking about this in this video, but I literally cannot stop using it on myself. And my friend came and I did her makeup, I used it. I My mom, my mom asked me to do her makeup one time and I also used this. I cannot not talk about it in today's video, but we'll get to it. That's for, that's blah, 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 blah. Let's start talking about the MAC Glow Play Blush in the shade Blush Please. So, so beautiful. Such a beautiful formula and such a stunning shade. This is the most stunning, flattering shade on my complexion. If I were to talk about the best blush shade for me, it would have to be this. And this is a gorgeous formula as well. It's like a putty texture that picks up easily on a brush and blends easily on the skin. So I really, really do adore this. It's beautiful. And again, like the shade itself is everything. The other one that I just have to talk about, I think I might have discussed my obsession with this blush at some point. But this is the Kiko Milano Ultimate, wait, not Ultimate, Unlimited Blush in the shade 12. This is a gorgeous shimmery blush, but you have to love shimmery blushes in order to love this. It's like this gorgeous, plum, not plummy, what? Bronzy, nude, beige shade. Stunning, stunning on the face. Beautiful sheen. I actually do not use a highlighter when I use this because I feel like it's a bit of an overkill but it's stunning, 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 stunning and I don't mind not using a highlighter when it comes to me applying this I feel like it gives me the right look and it looks gorgeous on the face Now let's, let's address my favorite blush discovery of the year Shiseido Inner Glow Cheek Powder Blush in the shade 7. I have two more that I'll talk about in the video, but my favorite one has definitely been the shade 7. It's called Coco Dusk, I think, yes. This is how it looks. It doesn't really look like an interesting shade, but these are the best blushes I find. Shades that you look at them and you're like, oh, mm, it's quite boring, maybe I should just overlook it. These are the shades that look the best on your face. And this is the case with this. I love using it not only as a blush, but also like as a soft bronzer all over my face. I just love, love, love this. And actually, although she sort of doesn't have like a bronzer or a highlighter in the range, I think they might have like those potted cream highlighters, but I haven't tried them and I can't speak to the quality. Uh, if your complexion can definitely like wear this and you feel like it's bronzy enough, you can definitely use this as a bronzer. And there is the shade, maybe like one, it might be called, I don't remember what it's called, but the shade one also is a stunning highlighter. But we'll talk about Shiseido later on. Let's do eyes now. I feel like I'm going quickly and I love that. Let's talk about eyes. The Dior Mono Color Couture Single Eyeshadows are amazing, aside from one, which we won't talk about because it's, well, but the other three that I have, I absolutely adore. Let's start off with the shade New Dress. New Dress is probably like my most reached for because it's such a such an easy color to wear and it looks very flattering and almost like my 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 lids but better with a bit of a spark with like a tiny hint of a sheen hint of a sparkle it's so beautiful it's like this golden brown very light and very daytime friendly i just really love this shade and the way that it applies and blends is beautiful i also really love the shade poncho if I want to give my eyes a bit more definition because this is slightly darker than, well, it's darker than uh, 
nude dress and it's also still warm enough for me not to feel like it's daunting and unnatural on my complexion. It's the right amount of dimension and you can definitely use it as like a smoked liner or like on your lower lash line, slightly in the crease if you don't want it to get too dark or if you want it to get too dark you can just like build it up a little bit but I am not that kind of person who applies dark eyeshadows. Um, so the fact that I'm talking about this is saying a lot, <laughs> definitely. Now, this is my favorite shadow to use on people, as well as myself. This is the Beige Mitza shade. This is definitely the most complex and the most unique shade out of everything that I have. It looks dimensional, it looks, mm, it looks like you've applied a lot more effort into your eye look than you actually have because you've just applied one shadow and you just like blended it sloppily and it somehow blended perfectly and it looks like it looks gorgeous gorgeous I adore adore the undertones I adore the complexity I adore the blendability I adore how long lasting these things are I just love love these shades and by far if you want to get one shadow from the range I would definitely make it beige mitza because it's really unique and it's unlike anything I've ever tried. Now the other shadow formula that I have absolutely been living for is the Shiseido um, pow, pop powder gel something. Pop powder gel eyeshadow. I have four shades. I love them all. But I will tell you that the shade beige is too simple to warrant the price tag but I'm still gonna talk about it because it's really really lovely. So let's talk about first the shade brown. The shade brown is absolutely beautiful. Look how dark it is. For me to talk about this says a lot about the shadow than about me because somehow I can still make it look like something that I would be wearing daytime, nighttime and everything in between. This is a beautiful like wash of brown with amazing, amazing, tiny golden sparkly specks. So beautiful and because of the contrast between the sparkles and the base, it almost looks so chromatic. It's really, really lovely and I highly, highly recommend it. I love applying these initially with my finger and then taking a brush and diffusing the outer edges. I just think that it applies beautifully that way but I also love applying it initially with a brush and blending the edges as well I just I just love these next up is the shade ooh shade beige this is the shade that I think it's like um is it unique no is it incredible yes this is the shade that absolutely mimics my skin tone and my like and my um my texture my eyelid texture. When I apply it on my lids, I feel like even like when I do this with my finger, it's just like I rub my finger all over the shadow and then I apply it. I don't even have to blend it because it looks so at home on my crease or on my eyelid. It's incredible. It's the first and only shadow that I have in my collection that feels that way to me. So it makes me look at it as a special shadow although it's not really supposed to be a special shadow at all anything that says the word beige is never really like i don't know rocket science it's never a unique invention it's never an innovation but somehow it has proven to be innovative uh to me i just love it as well as Loving that, I adore, 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 adore the shadow Horo Horo Silk, number two. This is definitely the most unique out of the two because it almost looks mirror-like on your on your lid. I love, love this as a pop of shimmer or as a like inner half of lid uh, topper. So if I apply something like a maybe 
maybe the next one, the shade taupe, all over the lid. And I want to bring a bit more dimension and I want to maybe emphasize the darkness of my outer corner. I will apply this in, my, in the inner corner and it just kind of makes my eyes look more uh, like almond-like in terms of the shape and it emphasizes the inner corner while making the outer corner look darker and more like set back if that makes sense dimensional it's stunning speaking of taupe it's the last one it's the number four is it it's number eight uh that doesn't really matter but this is the most stunning taupey wash of taupe on the lids it has a bit of translucency to it but that just allows it to mix perfectly with your, with your eyelids and to still make the texture of your lid show through and look authentic. It's incredible, incredible, incredible. These eyeshadows are just so underrated and I wish I understood why more people are not talking about these because they absolutely should. They are incredible. Love these. Finally, let's talk about lips. I have four lip products. The first one is the first one that I discovered this year, which is MAC Glow Play. The first one I actually discovered was in the shade Greatly Admired, but that has taken a seat back because that tickles has definitely been my favorite of the two. I love a good brownie lip color and this is exactly that. It's so beautiful it's so gorgeous it's stunning i cannot even tell you how useful this has been in my collection and how complementary it is to my complexion as someone with yellow undertones i just love a good warm brown hint of color on my lips it's beautiful okay now these three i don't know in which order to talk about them because i'm so excited about each and every one of them but I think I'll talk about the duo first. This is the Dior Rouge Dior in the shade 100 Nude Look Satin Balm. It's Satin Balm, sorry. It's a lipstick that doesn't have much of a pigmentation, but it just like coats your lips with a veil of beige and maybe like a slight pink hint of... Maybe a slight hint of pink. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. And it just like smooths and perfects the texture of your lips. It's absolutely beautiful. I do adore these. I adore this. At the beginning when I first got it, I thought like, oh, it's just going to be like, you know, a nice lipstick to have for when I'm feeling fancy. I did not expect this to become a favorite. I really didn't. But because of how flattering it is and how easy it is to just grab and go, this has definitely become a favorite for me and I highly recommend specifically oh oh I highly recommend this shade and this finish beautiful I adore this underneath the Dior lip or lip, lip glow oil color reviver cherry oil in rosewood these together are so stunning on the lips. This is barely pigmented. It really isn't that pigmented, but it's definitely complementary. It definitely adds a special touch to your lips and I just love it. I will say that out of all of the lip products that I've tried this year, this by far is the stickiest. So I am mindful of how I layer, how much I layer of it because if I apply too much it kind of can give you those like strings when you open and close your mouth so don't apply too much that being said it feels incredible on the lips it really feels moisturizing and it feels like a nourishing oil and it looks impeccable it really does look impeccable on the lips I just highly recommend this last but not least I mean like uh, if I could just like tell you what my number one lip product in my collection is at the moment I would have to say the Givenchy Rose Perfecto lip balms I love these I mean like 
Now that I think about it, all of the lip products that I've been loving this year have been sheer. So it's quite a change from my matte lip preference. But I do still like a matte lip, for, lip color if it's going to be like a statement lip. Uh, not a liquid lipstick, just like a matte bullet. Anyway, so I have been obsessed with these. In fact, I have now three. And I got the liquid version of these because I loved them so much. This is the shade 102, which is what I have on my lips underneath the Rose Perfecto liquid lip balm in 120. Uh, or maybe it was 210. I really can't remember. But this is how it looks. It has this gorgeous marbling effect on the tube. And it's absolutely beautiful. This lip, uh, this like tinted lip balm is a bit unique because it's definitely more matte than you'd expect a lip balm to be first and also it lasts longer than any other lip, lip uh, like a lip balm or tinted lip balm I've, that I've ever tried has ever lasted on me. These are really really special. In fact they're, they're so special that when my friend told me that she is tired of liquid lipsticks and she wants something soft and hydrating, I immediately bought her one. These are so, so nice. I highly recommend these. And the fact that I have three and I bought two of the liquid version of these should be very telling. Yeah, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. My dog wants to say hello. Don't you? You see that? Oh, Juicy, you're so cute. I'm gonna go now, take my dog out a little bit so that he can breathe, and I can too. And I will see you in the next video. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment, and leave me what your favorite products have been so far. And I'll see you in the next one.